Spanish club. Swing choir. We got speech team. Football. Swing choir. Again, of course. And lastly, baseball. I'm going to need that back after this. This is a short list of a handful of activities that I was heavily involved in in high school. But alas, when I got to college, all of these seemed to melt away, and I was suddenly active in almost nothing. I feel like this happens to a lot of us, because of the added stress of college, more free time to manage, and let's be honest, when I have free time, I just want to sleep. And I got into the mindset that, oh, I'm too busy for more stuff. I can't add any extra activities to my already hectic schedule. This led to a failure to express myself and find an outlet that's outside of class, and this can lead to various problems. In this speech, I will divulge the main three problems that come with failure to be active in extracurricular activities outside of class, their remedies, and I will conclude with my overall solution. I will now discuss the heart of the issue and the first problem with participation in extracurricular activities. I will begin with a short story. So there's this guy who just graduated high school. You know, he's in his first semester of college. How about we call him Marvin? All right, so Marvin was on the football team. He was the freaking quarterback. He was captain of the chess club, swing choir. You know, he participated in all these things in high school. Once he got to college, he kind of dropped off the grid and stopped participating in anything. You know, he was kind of a lone wolf, didn't have many friends, and he just liked to spend his time sleeping and watching Netflix. Bless you, Charlie. Now, I have something to tell you. I am Marvin. That's me. That story. I didn't have very many friends first semester. I didn't participate in really anything except for orchestra, pretty much. So let this serve as an example. Um, getting involved is important. Don't let your schedule scare you. Because I was a music major and I had this crazy schedule, I thought I couldn't do anything in my free time but sleep. According to Helen Bland's 2014 article, quantifying the impact of physical activity on stress tolerance in college students, one of the best ways to cope with stress is through extracurricular activities. If it's something you're passionate about and something that you love to do, it won't add stress to your life, but alleviate it. This is proven by a study written about by Fredericks, Jennifer Fredericks, in her 2012 article, Extracurricular Participation and Academic Outcomes, Testing the Overscheduling Hypothesis. This overscheduling hypothesis pretty much says that there are negative consequences due to overscheduling with extracurricular activities in high school students. Now, the negative effects are the lowering of the GPA and low social interactions. Now, due to the study, it was decided that when a student is becoming too involved, they're usually at five to seven extracurricular activities at one time. Now, that's okay because the average is about two to three per person. Thus, the hypothesis was debunked and it was chalked down to the media just puffing up the subject of overscheduling students. Next, we will move on to the second problem that arises when dealing with extracurricular activities. And that is that the GPAs of non-participants are substantially lower than those who take part in activities outside of school. According to Chris Ward and Dan Yates in their 2013 journal, the impact on business students' personal growth and employability, students who participate in extracurricular activities have higher value for their schools, which leads to positivity, which increases test scores and GPAs. So it's kind of a big trickle-down effect. If you're happy, you're going to get better grades and have a higher GPA. So you're only helping yourself out by getting involved. Plus, a higher GPA in college will increase your employability in the future. When you go out and try to get a job, they're going to look at your grades from college and they're going to see, oh, hey, 
Christian had a 3.8. Wow, what a stud. We're going to give him the fat cat job with the view. But also, if you do notable activities in your free time, like choosing to do community service or volunteer work, it can also look great on your resume. Now, we move into the third, problem, third and final problem facing us. And that is simply finding the right activity for you. There's literally a plethora of options for extracurricular activities on campus, including student government, intramurals, choir, orchestra, and there's a buttload of clubs and organizations that you can join. I can't even count them all because there's more than 10. The first thing to keep in mind when choosing a club or organization or extracurricular activity to join is to follow your heart and find something that you're passionate about. Now, if you're like me and you're passionate about a lot of things like music and longboarding and sports, you just there's too many options still. So if that fails, just try something new, something you haven't thought of before. You never know, you could make some new friends or discover a new talent that you hadn't known about before. And it's okay if you try something new, it's not your cup of tea. You don't have to, it's not like a lifelong commitment here. You didn't sign a blood pact, there was no chanting or robes, and if there was, you probably shouldn't join that organization anyway. Finally, I will give you my overall solution to the issue of getting involved. So here's my big idea. Wait, no, sorry. We'll start with a little information. <laughs> According to the article by, mm, I'm going to butcher this, Gouvernement, fin Finlay and Cohen, Organized extracurricular activities are the in-school and out-of-school activities associated with different outcomes for Canadian youth. This was a study done in Canada, and it was to determine the effects of extracurricular activities on the high school students. And then it concluded that, quote, extracurricular activities, regardless of context, should be encouraged for positive youth development, end quote. And this just kind of makes me think about my old school and uh, actually my old middle school, Boone Middle School, and they had this thing called Club Day, and it was about every other Wednesday, they would have the students go to a different classroom and they would be exposed to the different extracurricular activities that would be um, available to them once they got to high school. And this was great because, I mean, I wish I could have gotten something that would show me all the different options available to me. And I actually got to take part in it. Um, I was in the speech team, and I got to go to the middle school every other Wednesday and teach sixth graders how to do improv. So I kind of got to promote that. It was tons of fun. Um, they also had other um, extracurriculars, such as orchestra, choir, TSA, and sports. And this leads me to my big idea. I think that we should implement a mandatory semester-based extracurricular movement at UNI. And what does that mean? Well, I'll tell you. It's kind of similar to the campus engagements that we do in our Cornerstone class. And the hope is that would eventually replace those. Um, so the key here is that it's implemented in this Cornerstone class because it'll target the freshmen, which honestly, I think are the most apt to um, not participate in extracurricular activities. And it requires them to participate in a new campus-based or off-campus extracurricular activity. Um, to track this, they can keep a weekly journal about their experience and then turn in the journal at the end of the semester. And you don't have to be, it doesn't have to be a journal, I mean, we can work out the details. But pretty much what this provides is freedom for the student to pick what activity they want to join, and just new experiences, new friends, and really helps get the freshmen out there. I have divulged all the problems one might encounter whilst getting involved. Now let's bring this baby in for a landing. In conclusion, I could stand up here and talk all day about getting involved, but some of you already are quite involved, and I applaud you. Very well done. My hope was to stir at least one of you into action today, though, and get some of you interested in getting involved. Now, I have to ask all of you to look under your chairs! Alright, you may be thinking, what the crap, Christian? There's nothing under here. But, that's where you're wrong. There's opportunity under there.
There's opportunity everywhere. All you have to do is reach out and grab it. Thank you.